Hi, Karina. Welcome to Movie Junk. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> I love that name, Movie Junk. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's yes, great. I'm very well. Thanks. Thank you for your patience. No, no worries. No worries. Super excited to have the beautiful and talented uh, Karina Arave. I'm sure Thank you've you. heard this before, but uh, you're in some of the most uh, classic films of our time. I mean, Lean on Me, 187, Dangerous Minds, Crash. I mean, to, to say it's an honor to have you on would be an understatement, but with nearly 35 years of film experience, nearly 50 credits, to your name, I can't thank you enough for joining us today. Oh, you're so, it's my pleasure, thank you. I'm just dying to jump into some of these movies, but I'd love to take it back. Yes, let's do it. Kind of how it all started for you. I mean, you moved here from Columbia at a young yeah. age, right? When yeah, I was, I was one. Yeah. And, and so when did you realize that you wanted to get into acting? Well, when I realized it, oh God, I was probably around, uh, 10 years old. Uh, my, mo my mom, my um, mom was uh, my first acting coach. You know, she, um, she, she, she used to just coach me privately, just the two of us, you know? Um, so I guess, it, I guess I was around 10 and she, um, you know, she, I got, she got me like my first little agent, you know? <laughs> um, and, you know, she'd take me to get pictures and, uh, and so I guess around age 10, I mean, I started kind of acting like before that, just on my own, sort of like in the mirror and stuff like that. But when I started pursuing it, I was around 10 years old. What were some, and I was in acting class too. What, what were some of the impersonations that you used to do in front of the mirror? Well, it was, it was I would just impersonate whatever I saw on the screen. Like if I saw a toothpaste commercial, I'd go and I'd do the toothpaste commercial in the, you know, whatever it was, yeah. So, so you got the, uh, the bug at a young age and then you said you also took some, uh, yeah. some acting classes as well, right? Yes, and I remember, um, here's what I remember about taking acting classes when I was 10. I remember the teacher telling me um, that I was terrible. <laughs> how, wrong? How, how wrong was the yeah. teacher? Yeah, because, what? I said, how wrong that teacher was. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. So what happened was they were like, okay, I want you to do a Pepsi commercial, but you have to do it as if you're in pain. And, and I really was bad. I, I mean, I went up there and I was like, oh, Pepsi. Oh, you know, I was totally hamming it up, right? <laughs> but I was 10 years old, you know what I mean? And the teacher's just like, oh, that's terrible. What are you doing? You're, you know, and I, that stuck with me. I remember that. Um, so teachers need to be very encouraging to their students. And if I'm not mistaken, I mean, Lean on Me was one of your first motion pictures that you actually- It was my first. Was it was my first movie. Right? How did you hear about the role? Mm -hmm. What was that audition process like? Well, I had, I had an agent at that time because um, in high school, we had a, um, we had a showcase uh, and then a bunch of agents came to see us and uh, uh, the J. Michael Bloom agency called me in and um, I went and I did two monologues for them. Um, and they just, they started working uh, for me, uh, with me. And um, I almost actually lost the role though, because I was freelancing with another agency and the people from Lean On Me mistakenly called that other one that I had just sort of briefly freelanced with. And this guy was so upset that I was freelancing with someone else that he told the Lean On Me people that I had gone to Puerto Rico. Oh, wow. You know, <laughs> I almost lost that role. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be honest, and I'm not just saying this just because we're doing the interview, but one of the scenes yeah. that always sticks with me from that movie is the scene where you're studying and cooking at the same time, and that fire's about to start, and the teacher comes in with mm -hmm. the extinguisher. That, that scene always yeah. resonates with me uh, with that film. That seems awesome. We did, yeah, oh, thank you. We did that in LA. Oh, okay. They, yeah, they flew us, they flew, uh, they flew us out just for some pickups there in LA. Yeah. And, uh, and that was one of the scenes that we did there. So, I mean, this is with Morgan Freeman kind of before mm -hmm. he was Morgan Freeman. I mean, he- Yes, exactly. Right, so I mean, he was already, I mean, pretty established, but he wasn't as big as he's known today. But I mean, that year, I mean, Lean On Me kind of catapulted him because, I mean, you had Driving Miss Daisy that year and Glory as well. But, I mean, after this is what kind of set him up. 
that 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 was his pulp fiction exactly you know how like like what pulp fiction did for travolta it, yep that's exactly. what lean on me did for for morgan freeman yeah we knew him as the guy from electric company oh yeah 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 <laughs> yeah so Thanks. we were excited about that I mean, what, what was it like working with him? I mean, I mean, this is, I mean, the film itself is a classic, but I mean, like, what was it like working with Morgan? What were some things that you took away from uh, working with him on set? Uh, just the, his kindness really was yeah. really the main thing. Um, yeah, he would, he was very, um, it was like, he was one of us, you know what I'm saying? He wasn't like, he didn't behave like, Oh, I'm I'm the star of the film, and so um, I'm gonna keep my distance. No, he was he, he loved being around the kids and talking to all of us, and um, uh, yeah, it, it, he was like you know one of the game, you know, very very kind, very very sweet man. Um, so that was the main thing that I took away, and then also his power to really kind of transform himself in the way that he did because he was very much um, not. Joe Clark. Mm -hmm. He was like the opposite, you know? Um, and so when he put on that suit, he, he became like this other person, but it was a testament to his, um, to his skill that he could transform in his personality just completely. No, absolutely. And I mean, yeah. with, uh, with, with Morgan, I mean, like the, he's so serious. Mr. Clark was so serious in this film that anytime you got yeah. a, a joke, you know, but he's just always yelling, yelling around, Sims, Sims. Give it. You know, it's just such a <laughs> classic film, and the director of this film, you know, John G. Abelson. I mean, that's not that's not a small director as well. I mean, from the Karate Kid and and Rocky, and um, we actually got a chance to learn a little bit more on uh, John G. Abelson. I interviewed um, Derek Johnson, Derek W. Johnson, who did King of the Underdogs. I met Derek. Oh, nice, nice. Any any good stories? Did you guys work together at all, or? I actually met Derek at. Um... At John's memorial. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, because he was sort of a mentor. Uh, John Abelson was sort of a mentor to uh, to Derek. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 He's, he's awesome. So I got to meet him. Excellent, excellent too. So I mean, yeah. for you, I mean, I'm sure you'd already seen the Karate Kid and maybe Rocky before going on this film. Was there any added pressure working with an established director like that? You know, I had seen. I had. God, this is so embarrassing. Um, I had seen Karate Kid, um, but I hadn't seen Rocky. I didn't, I mean, I I don't think I saw, you know, to be honest, I, I don't think I saw Rocky until um, until after uh, John passed away. Oh, I see, I see, I see. So after yeah, um, but um, I mean, I've probably seen, seen bits and pieces, um, but um, I mentioned this in another interview, I, um, I was actually, I was romantically involved with his son for 11 years after the movie, after Lean On Me. But so, you know, I wasn't, I honestly wasn't, even though I'd seen Karate Kid, I wasn't thinking about Karate Kid when I was working with him um, because he was so down to earth, you know, and it, it just, I don't know. I, I was, there was never a moment where I was like, this is the director of Karate Kid. It was always like, Oh yeah, John, the nice man who <laughs> who I work with. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was that kind of a, a feeling. So it was that was it, that was good. It was less pressure, you know. I, I take it back, and, and maybe it doesn't make it any better. But I I remember uh, his son. I know him as Snake from Karate Kid Three. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's what I yeah as Snake. Exactly. Yes, yeah. that's one of his sons, and his other son was also also worked on the film. Got it, got it. Okay, perfect. And yeah, I know. Um, so yeah, so it looks like so that year, John Abelson also directed Rocky Five. Um, so yeah, that was kind of coincidental. Kind of brought it back uh, full circle with. Uh, the, was it, it was that very same year? Yeah, eighty nine. Eighty nine is when uh, Rocky Five came out. Right when it came out, I think we did. Possibly, I feel like we did Lean on Me in eighty eight. So then, yeah, I think it was a year. The following year, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That seems more like the timeline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I went, I went over there and I visited and stuff like that. And I, it didn't seem like it was so, like the same year, you know. Yeah, yeah. Because a lot of times yeah. when it comes out, it's usually filmed a year before, and that was all the post. Exactly. Where it comes out. Exactly. Exactly. 
So I, I definitely want to get into another legendary actor, Samuel L. Jackson, the movie 187, mm-hmm. which yeah. for me, I mean, that was kind of the film where I, I kind of noticed you the most because, you know, for me growing up, you know, that was, don't, don't ask. And I was a kid when I saw that movie. Don't ask how I saw it. I happened to just sneak in and watch it one day. But such a right. dramatic film, such a serious film. And I really uh, enjoyed just seeing the transformation of your character. You did such a good job in that film. There Thank was you. an emotional scene in that film. And um, even Thank when I you. watch it today, it still affects me um, like it did so long ago. But, um, you know, what was it like kind of work? Because was, I'm sure that wasn't an easy film to work on. What was it like with those scenes? You know, it, it, it affects me too when I, I haven't seen the movie in a while, but I took a like I took a break in terms of not watching it for many years and then when I saw it again I was like oh this is so powerful you know just everything that you know and you know, and Sam's character and what he did with that character was just really beautiful um that you know somebody just I did a I did a this live interview um I think last week and um and someone asked me what's your what's your the, your favorite role that you've ever done and um and I thought about it and I think in terms of the whole experience I would say 187 so as difficult as it was in terms of the emotion and you know what the what the character was going through um gosh it just holds such a special place in my heart uh part of it was actually working with Kevin Reynolds the director Oh gosh, I mean, he was just so, um, I don't even know how to describe it, but I remember him saying to me, you were born to be an actress. He actually said that to me, you know, and what that meant to me, you know, after having kind of struggled in terms of, um, you know, basically my mom was the only one who kind of supported me being an actress and then the rest of the family was like no you know you know all these things so I there was a lot of opposition to me pursuing you know what I wanted to do and then for me to work with him and for him to say that to me um was just incredible Uh, and you know and we we did we went along like on the location scouting for that like with with um you know, Sam Jackson, and I, I think probably Cliff went to Cliff, uh, Clifton, uh, Gonzalez, Gonzalez. Uh, well, he goes by Collins now. Um, yep. but yep. working with, with what? No, no, I was saying, yeah. Yeah. Working with Cliff was just, um, that was another just blessing, um, uh, in terms of doing that movie. Uh, and, and, you know, and Sam was very professional, very like just, um, just fun to, you know, just fun to be around. He had a very fun, you know, vibe. Like he's not, he, he and I are very different in terms of he doesn't um, like, I really, I get into it and I get into my space and I just block everything out. And he's just always available to talk to whoever, and he doesn't need to, you know, prepare or anything. He's just, he can just turn it on like that. Um, But, um, but yeah, it was, God, did, did I answer your question already? And I'm just kind no, of going absolutely. on and on. I just, I just wanted to add to that. I mean, because your character was so reserved in the beginning of the film. How you, you know, you, someone in that in that uh, film where if you're studying or trying to progress, is, was kind of seen as a downer. And just seeing where you, how reserved and quiet your character was to giving the graduation speech at the very end. Uh, just seeing you transform was amazing. One, one thing I wanted to add as well is. I feel like in in all your performances, you're always crying, and you're so good at crying. And I wanted to ask, like, how how do you do that? Is it just second nature? Can someone tell you to cry, and then it just happens, or how do you get into the scene like that? It's actually, you know, I've heard that before. It's so funny because <laughs> whenever we're crying. what you're the best at crying by far. <laughs> Thank you. No, you know why I'm laughing because, you know, every time I have to upgrade my demo reel. Um, it's always like, oh, and here's another scene where you're crying. <laughs> it's just it's, it's kind of like a running joke, you know. Um, it's actually, believe it or not, it's actually difficult for me. 
um, not in, not in, I mean, I'm a very emotional person, you know, um, and, and I was, oh gosh, I was always told growing up, you're, 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 you're too sensitive. You're too, you know, um, but when it comes to in, in acting, it's actually, um, it's actually very difficult for me. And I, I have to work really hard to build that up inside me, you know? So I, it's, 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 it's real work for me. I, I use pictures and songs and, um, but I always make a choice about who I'm talking about and who I'm talking to, you, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, so I, I'm always prepared in terms of like, well, if this doesn't work, then I'll use this. If that doesn't work, then I, I always have like, there's always like a, a medley of, uh, of choices um, and, that, and that helps. And, and I'll be honest, well, actually, this film has a very uh, intense uh, finale, you know, with that Russian roulette scene. And, I, and I'll be honest, I'm, I was a little late to watching uh, Deer Hunter. So I saw- I still haven't seen it. <laughs> and it's, it's a must, it's a must. I mean, yeah. 70s De Niro is some of the best stuff. Um, and yes. so for me, I wasn't able to connect with that rush for me it was just an intense scene i thought that was created during that film because i was still fairly young when 187 came out so then yeah. when, when i read about the film and you know and um saw that reference you know i actually watched um a deer hunter maybe five years ago and um mm -hmm. you know th and then watching 187 again was just so much more impactful because i didn't think that you know it was actually going to happen i thought maybe you know there was someone was going to live at the end but yeah, it's such yeah. a beautiful scene, and uh, yeah. You I mean, know, that wasn't the original ending. Or are you able to share what was the original ending? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to hope that I, I remember it. Um, the original ending was um, kind of like a, sh a, a, a chase and a shoot 'em up, bang 'em up kind of, you know, uh, kind of um, more like a, a confrontation between the two of them, and then you know, one of them ends up shooting the other and it was more sort of, you know, traditional, sort yeah. of like what you, you kind of see um, done more often. And I believe it was, it was Kevin, Kevin Reynolds, uh, who was like, you know, we've seen this before, you know, we've mm -hmm. seen the guy come into the house and then, you know, there's a standoff and then, you know, one of them ends up, you know, killing the other. And, um, and because of that input, I believe that that's how um, Scott Yeagerman, who wrote this, who wrote the script, um, ended up changing it because of, uh, out of you know from Kevin's suggestion. Yeah, because now so, you're seeing the growth of, of uh, Samuel's character now too. I mean, he was the one yeah. that was in control. The roles yes. were reversed at that point. Yes, we we know what happens, obviously, but. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's a phenomenal uh, film, you know, just all around. You know, you, you, I'm so glad you liked it. Thank you. Um, you know what's, what scene I love so much that always gives me chills from that movie is when, um, I don't know if you, you, you I'm, okay, I hope the folks who, are, who like the movie um, know what I'm talking about. When Sam is just sitting there on his bed and you see the cross behind him. Yeah. And you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. And then there's the, the music from, um, is it um, Massive Attack? That I think it's maybe some there's Massive Attack music playing. playing. What? Yeah, it's a very intense song that's playing in the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, it might not be ma Massive Attack, but Massive Attack is on that soundtrack like a lot. Um, and, um, and it, it's almost like there, it's almost like some kind of chanting or prayer that's yeah. happening. And the camera's just kind of like going around him, you know, and he's just there, you know, just sitting there and he's so serene and he's so just, he's just pure acceptance, you know? And I, I, and every time I watch him do that, I'm just like, oh, it's so good. It's so good. Especially if you know what's coming later. Yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to say that. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And, and, and I hope you don't get mad, but for me, I mean, that's my favorite performance of yours. Uh, I think- Oh, I won't get mad. <laughs> Thank you. Just, that's, that's the one that I relate to the most when I see your work. And I just, I really love that film. I, I just think it's something that, um, 
you know, just is so impactful. And every time I go rewatch, thank you. It's just the same each time. But yeah. It's, oh, thank you so much. Now, thank you. That means a lot to me. No, of course, of course. Now, Dangerous Minds. This movie is uh-huh. a little, um, you know, kind of close to home because you know I actually live in the Bay Area. The real Luann Johnson, she taught at Carlmont, which is in Belmont. And I actually go to that school all the time. It's it's not too far away from where I live, but I think where you guys filmed was actually in Burlingame, which was about 10 minutes up north from the real school where the film- Oh, was. okay. I don't remember where we filmed. I just remembered where we stayed while we were filming. <laughs> That's what I remember. Yeah, yeah no, we stayed in Glendale. Awesome, awesome. So you guys did some filming in Southern California, but there was also a lot of it in the Bay Area, right? Did you ever come to this side or? Uh, I, I know we went to San Francisco. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is that's what you, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we went to San Francisco for uh, the amusement park stuff. Got it, got it. So that, whenever I saw that film, I always thought that was Santa Cruz by the beach. Was that Santa Cruz or was it a different beach where you guys set up that scene? I mean, maybe Santa it's- Cruz Beach? Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's hard to remember from, from back then. I just know we went to San Francisco. That's that's all I. That's the extent of what I remember. Um, yeah, there's a, whatever wherever so we went to some amusement park there. Got it. Got it. Awesome. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. 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 So what was the like yeah. with uh, Michelle Pfeiffer? She is beyond words. Incredible. From when we we all met and we all went to to read the script um there there was a script but at the same time uh, a lot of it got written as we went along you yeah. know um in terms of what the kids did you know that was all sort of written from improv um but um uh but there but there was you know sort of just like this you know a script that was kind of the the the, the backbone of the story you know the outline you know um and and she was, she deserved an Oscar just for that reading. Oh yeah, oh yeah. She, I mean, that, she was so moving. And, and I remember just being so blown away that she would just d- put all that into just a reading, which not, I've done readings with other, you know, you know, famous actors and um, they don't all do that. <laughs> they don't all put their 100% into, you know, into just a reading, you know, and she did that. Um, And she was just the most open, uh, welcoming uh, person. I remember actually when we were in San Francisco, we were waiting um, just to, you know, do one of the rides or something like that. And she was there and uh, and I had had a dream and I don't think it was about her, but I had this dream and I felt like telling her about it. (laughs) I told her what my dream was and the way she was looking at me while I was telling her the dream, it was as if I had paid her to analyze it and she wanted to do the best possible job, you know, and she was just looking at me like really trying to figure out for me, like what this dream meant. It was just a a beautiful moment. She was just incredible. And at the time she had just adopted her baby. Um, And I remember being so just sort of inspired by her. Like here she is, you know, she's got this incredible career. You know, she's just this, you know, incredibly angelically beautiful woman. Um, And she goes out of her way to adopt this baby. And she's just, I don't know, you know, she would just, uh, she made a big impression on me. Yeah, I mean, she can, her ability to transform, I mean, we obviously, we all know her as uh, Elvira, right, <laughs> from Scarface. Right? Yeah. And then being able yeah. to transform into this, into this teacher, and she's so good in this film, so good in this She film. really is. And um, yeah, I mean, also too, I mean, it goes without saying, how good is the soundtrack of Dangerous Minds? Oh, yeah, yeah, Thanks yeah, I just... Yeah, I just remember that one song. I don't remember the rest. Or, or, or but the, Gangster's yeah, Paradise. Yeah. Or what? Or yeah, the, uh, the the main song, the Gangster's Paradise, is just you know so good. It doesn't matter when when it's playing. You always gotta listen to the whole song every time it's on. And it's it's so it breaks my heart that song. 
yeah. you know, because we, you know, everything that they're singing about and it's just so, and that, and that hook is so powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just love it. Um, you know, sh shifting into some of the, um, you know, kind of some of the other actors and actresses that you've worked with, is there anyone mm -hmm. that, I mean, you've, again, you know, we're close to 35, you know, years. Is there anyone that you haven't worked with yet that you're still hoping to maybe work with one day? Oh, that is a long list. <laughs> the folks you work with is a lot. I what? Yeah, I mean, you work with some of the some of the legends of Hollywood. So, is there? I, you know, I guess I I guess I have. It's funny. Sometimes what happens is I'll be watching something, and I'll be like really into it, and then like half an hour into it, I'll be like. Oh yeah, I worked with them. Oh my god, they totally like you know. Forget about it, you know. Um, you know the person that's coming to mind right now is, and I, I, I hate to say this, but I, I know I'll never work with her. I shouldn't say that. I should be more positive. But Kate Winslet. Oh my god. The best. The best. The best. The best. She's phenomenal. The the be just the best period you know um man if oh, you know i think if i ever worked with kate winslet i wouldn't even have to do any emotional preparation because just the fact that i'd be working with her would make me so vulnerable that i would just you know what i mean yeah so she definitely comes to mind um and in terms of um i guess maybe i should pick a male actor um gosh I don't know. She uh, let's just leave it with Kate Winslet because <laughs> she that's enough. You know, it's like yeah. No, absolutely. And um, you know, I know uh, you mentioned the uh, the Sopranos. Um, yes. You work with one of my um, all time favorites from the show, Dominic Chianese, um in it. Yes. Stunning, stunning film. Um, what was it like uh, working with uh, with Dominic? And you also worked with um, Elizabeth Pena. Uh, the late Elizabeth Pena, love her in Rush Hour and La Bamba, obviously. Um, what was it like uh, working with Dominic in uh, Adrift in Manhattan? Another beautiful film. Uh, he well, we had that. Yeah, we yeah we we worked together. Uh, I think it, it was it was those two scenes um, where I met him, and then later I met I'm at his, or he's at our house, or one of those two. But um, you know, he was great, and I I feel like because. I don't know if you remember the scene where we have that that the dinner table we were around the dinner table and we had to do so much improv for that you know and he just kept on coming up with these new things and um and he was just so in the moment and just you know like a, like a kid you know like a kid playing you know yeah it was great and um oh elizabeth pena my god you know, I, I wanted to be like her best friend, you know, while we were doing that, she was so very just accessible, like we really, you know, were able to talk to each other. And she was so uh, just again, just down to earth. And um, anyway, I just, what a tragedy, really beautiful, was, beautiful woman. Was that the first time you guys worked together? Yeah. That was the first time I'd met her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, know, she, she played my mom. Yep, yeah, yeah, she's she's amazing, and um, you know, love love the work that she did. She's simply phenomenal. And um, I yeah. know you mentioned uh, Dominic Kennedy. So this was actually, if I remember, 07, which was right at the end of Sopranos. So you're kind of getting it, kind of right at the height. So um, yeah, I know that's awesome. Awesome cast, uh, beautiful film. I actually um, saw it not too long ago. I um, just thought it was a beautiful. A drift film. in Manhattan. Yeah, saw it not so long ago. Yeah, it was a beautiful film. And yeah, the, the the subject matter is very touching. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, too, I mean, I always like to ask this question to uh, you mm -hmm. know, at folks of the interview. You know, what are some of the shows that you're binge watching today? What are, what do the actors uh, like to watch in their free time when they're not working? Um. Well, I don't I don't watch a lot, um, but I'll tell you what I did watch which made me say Kate Winslet, Mayor of Easttown. Have oh, you seen yeah. it? Yeah, I haven't seen have it. Have you seen it? I, I have some close friends that keep uh, raving about it, but I want to see it. Oh my God. My God. 
Phenomenal. Did that take me on a ride? Hmm? Phenomenal show, huh? Fun, just, just wow. On so many levels. And my favorite thing about it was the, and not to give anything away, but just the, the mental, as, mental health aspect of that show is uh, very, very much needed. Uh, and um, yeah, and she was, I mean, when I say flawless, I saw a funny meme and it was someone, it was somebody, somebody was saying, um, you know, trying to find a, a flaw in Kate Winslet in Mare of Easttown. And they were sort of like looking like that, like, and it's true. Yeah. You, it's just like not a TV show. Like she was that real person and all this stuff just really happened. And that's how good she is. Yeah. yeah. I guess so. it on my list. I, I do want to see. In there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Actually, another show actually I forgot to and definitely uh, don't want to let you escape out of here without talking about uh, Orange is the New yeah. Game. Phenomenal yeah. show. You were in the final season. Uh, I mean, that, that show was one of the uh, shows that kind of kicked off Netflix uh, streaming for, for TV shows. I mean, it, it did. It did. Yeah. Yeah. Such, such a long running and um, your character. I mean, that, that final scene is so sad. I mean, we're kind of let to believe that, you know, spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, maybe I won't get too deep into the, uh, but yeah, the ending is so sad, but what was it like? I mean, working on, on that show, because the show was kind of already kind of established by the final season, but like, what was oh, it sure. kind of, kind of jumping in, uh, no added pressure. Yeah, no, you know, um, I just spoke about this on this other interview, and but I, I hadn't seen the show when I was, when I went to work on it. Okay. Um, so, and, and, and nothing against the show. It just, uh, like I, like I was mentioning, there's a lot that I, that I don't see. Um, and so, which was actually better because I really didn't know. Uh, I, 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 I had seen like certain episodes that were sent to me, uh, like in SAG screeners, like for your consideration, like, you know, so I'd seen maybe a few episodes in, in terms of that, but I really didn't know, oh, this person, you know, had this whole thing and this. So it was actually better for me to go on there, just kind of like blank. Like, I don't know who anyone is. I don't know. Um, so that was, um, so I think that was better for me to, to go on there like that. Uh, but the experience itself was very, uh, very moving and very, I felt very passionate about the subject matter mm -hmm. because it had, it had just happened and it was still happening yeah. in the world. Yeah. Um, and to be able to give these real women a voice and, and a personification yeah. in terms of, uh, of Carla um, was really an honor. Yeah. You know, like what an honor that, you know, this horrific thing is happening to you and I get to tell your story. Like I'm honored, you know, that's, that's really what I felt. Yeah. I'm, I'm a little bummed that the show uh, ended. I felt like they, we, we could have snuck in a few more seasons. Uh, it was still doing really, really well. And who knows, maybe, maybe it'll come back and maybe we'll find out kind of what happens, uh, the fate of your character as well. Um, yeah, I have people writing me like, I don't think she died. And then, oh, sorry, spoiler alert. <laughs> um, I don't think she died. I think that I had, I had one, and I don't know, I hope this person is watching, but I had one, one follower. Um, he wrote to me and he wrote out an entire story of how it was possible for Carla to get from the desert to back to her children. She, he wrote out this whole story and it was incredible. So it's possible, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I still have faith. I mean, who knows, maybe someone else that's wandering can come, kind of come across you and, and maybe be able to, to save you. So um, I think the, uh, the writers are really smart. If they wanted to kind of give you that fate, we probably would have seen it. I think uh, because they know how talented you are, they don't want to close the door of maybe bringing you back if they ever- Oh, you are, you are the sweetest. Oh my God, that is so- that's beautiful of you to say that. Thank you. Oh, my God. Um, great. I wanted to sneak in a fan question too. So um, I actually got a sure. question from a fan asking, um, what advice can you give to someone that's looking to break into the business, whether it's acting or writing, you know, what advice can you give to an aspiring actor or writer? 
Well, in terms of, um, I answered this on another interview and I'm gonna give a different answer only because the specifics of your question, breaking in, right? Do, are they there right now? Are they live or something? Like, could you okay. clarify if it's, oh, okay, okay. Um, okay, in terms of breaking in, um, God, see, this is what I don't know. I don't know if they're asking, how do you break in? Do you know? Do you know, you think that that's what they're asking? Yeah, it looks like the, the question's kind of more general, but uh, as far as uh, kind of what are the first steps? Because I know for a lot of folks, it's kind of starting an acting school and kind of like so, some actors advise starting an acting school. Some, some from my hearing, mm -hmm. interview, they say it's not just about school. It's about just, you know, getting more auditions. Um, so you mm -hmm. kind of hear some mm -hmm. mixed feedback for me. I mean, I'm, I'm an aspiring writer. I just, this is my, mm -hmm. my dictionary right here on there too. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think more um, kind of what, what advice do you think there's some benefits into going into acting school, um, starting oh. school or? Oh, absolutely. I would say it's a, it's a combination of training. Yeah. Um, of course, some, some very successful people have never had training, you know, someone like Jennifer Lawrence, but that's rare, you know. Um, but um, uh, I think it's a combination of, of training and even even above training is really knowing yourself and whatever that is going to mean for you because you are your own instrument you know yeah. um you you've you've got to know the instrument and that's you you know it's almost like a like someone who plays a piano you know has to know that piano you know so i would say it's a combination of knowing yourself um training uh and then you know, and, and location plays a part in it as well, because, you know, where are you in the country? And are you in a place where, where, they, where they are uh, producing work? Um, yeah. and, and if you're not, are you willing to go there? Uh, and, and, and if you're not willing to go there, what's, what's around you? Start with your local theaters, you know, are they, you know, hiring? Are they looking for people, especially now that things are opening back up again? So those three things, I think, play play a big part in it. Um, knowing yourself, the training, and 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 location, and figuring out what you're willing to do about your location, whether you're in you know in a in a viable place or not. Does that make sense? No, of course, of course. And Karina, have you ever thought about maybe doing like a master class where you know folks can kind of reach out and kind of learn from your experiences and be able to give those. Have you ever had those any kind of considerations to do in a master class? You mean like a master class, like, um, like the, like, um, like, online, uh, like online. the online one. Yeah. I think you'd be awesome. You know, where, where I would just record it and, uh, yeah. yeah I mean, I, I, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, well, thank you for saying that. I, I do feel that I have a lot to say about it, you know? Um, and, uh, and so, but in terms of like recording something where it would, um, where it would just, I would do it the way that Samuel Jackson did his, where he was actually working with, did you see Samuel Jackson's? Were you able to catch that? His masterclass? Yeah. Uh, I have I haven't yeah. seen, I haven't seen it not yet. Oh, okay, because he was the only one that that actually worked with students. Do you know what I'm saying? In his, yeah. so I would that that would sound more appealing to me. You know, to be able to actually work with students like in, in front of the camera, as opposed to just doing one where it's just it's just me. You know, talking. You know, so that 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 other option sounds more appealing to me. But thank you for saying that. Yeah, definitely where you kind of more interactive with the with the students. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, Rita, can you share any of your upcoming projects, any any films that you got in the works or any shows that you might be working on that you could spoil? I, for I, you know, I'm, I'm waiting for my next job, honestly. I'm um, just like, uh, you know, um, yeah, it's 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 been a while now throughout the whole pandemic. Um, I mean, I did a um, I did a a, a radio play. Uh, during the pandemic, you know, which was, which it was nice to have that to work on. Um, but, you know, I'm just like, okay, uh, 
you know, it, it, this happens with me sometimes where I go a little bit and it's like, all right, I know I'll work with the, when the, when the project is right, I'll, you know, but right now I'm just, uh, um, where is it? Let's see. <laughs> Yeah, no, you, you never go uh, too long. I mean, even if you do take a short break, I always notice with your work, there's always something awesome that you end up doing too. So um, yeah, definitely. Thank uh, you. Just keep it up. And if you told me, you know, 20, 25 years ago that I'd be sitting down, you know, interviewing you, the kid and myself, I'd say you're crazy. But I just, I want to be respectful of your time. I want to thank you for joining us today because uh, I, can, I can pick your brain for, uh, for hours and want to save some time for, uh, for round two. Uh, when you get some new project. So thank you very much. Oh, Zaya, thank you. I said it right this time, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yay. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, thank you. yes. Um, no, thank you. And thank you for your support all these years. And thank you for your support on Instagram. You're so sweet. I love your, <laughs> you know, when you watch my stuff, you're very, very sweet, very supportive. And, and that means a lot to me. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, hope to talk soon. Take care. Okay, great. All right. Have a good night, Zaya. Take care.